Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be building this scene. Uh, before we had this kind of a boring scene, we had like some spheres or wells and quads, very simple, but we are gonna be wanting to do a couple more optimizations to our engine, so we need a lot of objects on the screen. Right now I currently have 500 trees, I have 200 flowers, and I have a well that is unlit and needs to be fixed. We will fix that. But this is what we're gonna be doing in this episode. I'm gonna show you how to create a scene. As you can see up there, there's a sun, and uh, yeah, add a couple light sources. This is gonna be awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Like and subscribe, do all that stuff, but I wanna get into it, so let's go. So when creating a scene, we need to go through a series of steps. Step one, let's create the scene file. So. Add a new file to our scenes folder here. We're gonna click Swift File and we will call it the forest scene because that's original. And inside of the forest scene, we're gonna copy everything that's in the sandbox scene and we're just gonna paste it into the forest scene because everything's kind of already set up. Uh, and then we're gonna say class instead of sandbox scene, we will say forest scene. So now we have our forest scene. Inside of our scene manager, we need to now go and add another case so up here in scene types, let's say case forest, case forest inside of set scene. So if we call the function set scene to forest, uh, it will now set it to the forest scene. And let's rename this to forest. And now that our scene manager knows all about our scene that we just made it our forest scene, all we now need to do is set that as the starting scene type. So go to preferences, instead of doing sandbox under starting scene type, let's do forest. Our forest scene doesn't want a black background. It's not gonna be nighttime. We're gonna start with daytime. And uh, daytime usually is some sort of a blue. So I'm gonna say sky blue here. MTL clear color. Uh, let's do red three, let's do green four, and blue, let's do eight. That sounds good. Press play and let's check out this clear color to make sure that it's somewhat of a sky color. Of course it's not a sky color because I need to say sky sky blue right there for our clear color. Press play and now let's try it. That looks like it's gonna be a pretty good sky. Let's press stop and go back into our forest scene. Inside of our forest scene, we're gonna remove everything that we don't need, including well, we don't need these wells, don't need the quad, and we don't need any of this do update. We're gonna start with just a basic scene, remove that set light ambient intensity, and now our scene is ready to be created. Which brings us to step two. Step two is gonna be getting the assets and resources that we need for our scene. Now, I don't know if you know about Kenny Assets, but Kenny Assets is awesome. This guy, he's not my, I'm not, he's, I'm not, I'm not sponsored by this guy. I just wanna promote him because he's awesome. Basically everything you see on his sites, he's got sounds, he's got 3D models that are low poly for the most part. He's got characters, he's got characters with animation. He's got little icons for, he's got all sorts of stuff on here and it's all free. He's got some stuff you gotta pay for, but it's all free. And what's cool about this is that it's a really good way to get you started in your game. You don't have to have the most fancy things inside of your game in order to get it going. You can create a low poly scene and then you know go replace it with your own assets later. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this nature kit. And if you go get the nature kit, you'll see that this download button just automatically works. And that's because he just takes donations. He doesn't make you pay for his stuff. I highly suggest you donate to this guy because he's awesome or girl, whatever he is. Go donate to this guy. I don't know who the hell he is. I hope that he's doing great though because this is amazing. He gives you all these resources. This is the scene we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using all these trees. We'll use a couple of these flowers and we're probably gonna use like a terrain or two. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the pack that we're gonna go. Just go look through all this stuff, it's awesome. So go ahead and click download. I've already downloaded it and let's jump into exactly what's inside there. So inside the Kenny Nature Kit, we need to select some of the resources, some of those models. So if you go Kenny Nature Kit, models, we want the OBJ format. Inside of here, we have all sorts of models. And what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna go grab a couple of these and throw them inside of the folder structure because we now need to finish step two by selecting these resources. All right, and after looking through all of those different Kenny assets, I've come upon trees, flowers, and terrain. Basically from here to here, these are all the objects I selected. You can go through all those and select as many more as you want and add them to the scene. If you're following this tutorial and you're trying to build your own scene, I'd love to see it. So if you could go to the Discord channel, throw that at me because I'd love to see what you come up with. I'm gonna use just three different trees, three different flowers, and some basic terrain, but I wanna see what you guys have. So come on over to my Discord channel and show me. And starting with the terrain. So we have this basic terrain. And something to note about the terrain is it's located at the origin. So the origin zero, zero. Sometimes they put the origin here for the terrain. So it would be kind of filling up this spot. That's awesome. 
because now if we rotate this object, it's basically just gonna rotate around the origin. Second thing I wanna note about how cool this uh, mesh is, is it goes to negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. And if I were to go into the OBJ, open as source code, you'll see that the vertices only go to 0.5, which means from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, that's only one. So each terrain tile is going to be one unit. And that's way easier to work with as opposed to uh, if it filled up this entire thing, negative one to positive one, that's actually two units on each side. So that's two. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be working with this terrain. I also selected some flowers and as you can see, they come with their own uh, material file, which is awesome. They don't have like ambient or specular or anything like that. They're just basically the color, but we can add whatever we want to these. Um, but yeah, I got a yellow flower, a red flower and a purple flower. Uh, and then for the trees, I've selected tree pine tall A because it's got a little bit of detail pine round C, uh, yeah, and pine default B. Now, if you're a tree person, you're like, none of these trees actually go together. I don't care. I don't care about your feelings, honestly. Uh, I would rather just make a scene that has trees in it. How about that? All right. So yeah, now that we have all of the materials selected, we still need to add these to our engine. So we're in like step 2.5, okay? 2.5 is going down to our entities, libraries, mesh library, and adding all of these meshes to the engine. So the first thing I'll start with is the terrain. Let's add some terrain and we will do case. What is this? Ground grass it looks like. So this first one's ground grass. So I'm just gonna call this ground grass. And inside fill library, I'm just gonna copy one of these guys real quick because that makes it a lot faster. I'll do a little comment with some terrain action and boom, paste. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each one of these and I'll say ground grass because that's what this OBJ file is called and I will go ground grass. And now I have imported the ground grass into my engine and I can use it wherever the hell I want. And I will do that for every single one of these models in fast forward. So I'm gonna do that, I'll be right back. All right, so I've gone through the entirety of all of these different objects. You don't need to worry about the MTL file, but for every one of the OBJs, I've added a corresponding case inside of the type. So up here I have tree, I have three trees and three flowers. And inside here I have three trees, three flowers. Didn't really do any correlation between the trees and which ones I used. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but these are gonna be the models that I use. And I suggest you go through and add as many as you want because we're about to jump into step three, which is creating the scene. So now we have all the resources put together, we can now create our scene with them. I'm gonna go down inside of game shiz and go to the forest scene and start adding some stuff. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set my camera a little bit higher. Uh, so debug camera.set position to, let's do Y axis one, and then instead of eight here, let's do three. And then I'm gonna rotate my camera ever so slightly. So camera.set rotation, let's say float. Uh, we wanna do like 10.2 radians. So it's basically just looking down a little bit, but not, not too much. Uh, and then we also need this to be on the X axis. So set rotation X to be only 10 degrees on, and make sure that's in radians because that's how this rotation works. So now our debug camera is all set up. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move our sun up a lot more. So I'm actually gonna go like set position to 100, 100, because if this is the sun, it needs to be way off in the distance. It can't just be inside of our scene. That doesn't make sense. You can't have the scene like at five units away. It's just not enough. So I'm gonna put it at 100, 100 and we have our sun all the way up there. Now we're gonna do a little bit more with the sun in the future, but for now, we're just gonna leave it like that. The next place I like to start when I'm building a scene is just creating a terrain. So I'm gonna create a comment right here, terrain. I will say let terrain equal terrain. Oh, I'm just kidding, there's no terrain object. We need a game object. Now you can go and create a game object class if you want down here, like a Swift class. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna use our awesome game object class that's basically built like that's why we built an engine so that we can just create simple game objects. This will be called terrain. The mesh type will be dot ground grass. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say add child terrain. And we have a terrain in our engine. Let's go ahead and press play just to verify that this works. So it looks like we broke and that's because if I scroll all the way to the top, we have one misspelling and that is gonna be under this tree pine round C. Apparently this should be P. Make sure all these are spelled exactly like the OBJ file should be. Press play and this should work just fine. Look at that, we have a terrain. Look at our terrain, it looks so cool, uh, but it's very small. Our terrain is so small, let's make it a lot bigger. So let's go back to our forest scene and right under this we'll say terrain.setscale 
to, I don't know, let's make it big. Let's make it like, I don't know, 100. Let's just make it as big as we possibly can because we want to have some sort of a small little world. And boom, look at that. I'll look around a little bit and it looks like we're looking at the horizon. We have a beautiful blue sky and we have our green grass. Uh, let's go ahead and stop that. Go down and let's start adding something else like, I don't know, trees. So the trees need to be placed at a certain radius away. So first thing we'll do is we'll say let tree count equal, I don't know, uh, what do you guys want? Let's start with 200, 200 different trees. Uh, then we're going to say let radius e as a float equal, I don't know, let's say 10 units away. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop for i in zero dot dot less than tree count. So for every single tree in this tree count, uh, I want to add a tree. So let uh, tree equal game object, that really powerful game object class. Uh, let's do the name of tree. Now the mesh type for now, I'm just going to do some sort of a tree pine A, but just in a second, we're gonna do a randomized tree selection. So let's add a child tree. And we need to set some position. So I will say let position, uh, which will be a float three, but that'll be implicitly uh, typed. Anyway, let position equal float three. We need to X, Y, Z. So for now I'll do zero, zero, zero. Put these like so, uh, because right here for position, we are going to do float I and not just float i, we are going to do the cosine of float i. Now, if you don't know trig, that's okay. Basically, we're going to put them in a circle, so we need sine and cosine. That's some basic trig. If you don't know what that is, it's okay. Math's, you know, kind of tricky. Uh, we're going to import simd here. And, um, yeah, so we have the cosine, uh, and we're not going to be using the y right now because we don't actually have any up and down uh, stuff going on, but uh, in the future we might. So we'll just leave this as zero for now. And here we are going to use the sign of the float of I. So as I increases, we're just going to kind of go around in a circle a bunch of times and add that position. And then we're just going to add that tree. Actually, we need to set tree dot set position right here to our pause. I'm going to press play and we're going to see what it looks like. Okay. And this is what we get. We get our trees in a circle as you, we're going to go inside this trees real quick. And we're in this really crazy tree circle. So if I get out of here real quick and I look at the trees, you'll notice that we're not actually implementing that terrain radius. We need some sort of a radius. So I'm going to stop this radius isn't being used. Let's use it. Let's just multiply our value. So whatever we get right here, let's just multiply that by the radius and that should push it out by the radius amount. So we'll go right there, press play, and now let's see what it looks like. Cool, well, we have circle of trees. And of course, since we're just incrementing by I, there's this interesting pattern. Uh, but what we wanna do now is not make it look so ridiculous. So I'm gonna press stop, and we're gonna set them to some random locations. We wanna add some sort of an offset. And that offset that we're gonna do is going to be, we can go float dot, I don't know if you guys know we can do this, but float dot random. There's actually this random function and we can use basically this concept, this range concept. So float.random in, let's do two dot 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 negative two. And of course it can't be two to negative two, it has to be negative two to positive two. Now now let's first play and see what it looks like. Uh, that looks a little bit better. As you can see, uh, the trees are kind of moving left and right of each other. They're not side by side. Um, that's awesome. Now let's also give them some play uh, on the Z axis. My favorite, Number to put here is negative five to positive five. Let's press play for the Z axis and see what that looks like. Now it looks like we have some trees around us. Now these trees are all the same height. Let's do some randomized scaling after tree.set position. Tree.set scale to set scale to some float.random. Now we want to do one, so the scale of one, so whatever it is currently, dot, dot, dot. Two. So from one to two, we're either going to grow it or keep it at kind of where it's at. And then this needs to be dot. in order to not break, we need to do one dot, dot, dot. So now we have a bunch of trees. Look at our trees. So sweet. And the last thing we want to do, as you can see, all these trees are rotated in the exact same direction. That looks a little ridiculous. So let's rotate them randomly. So tree dot rotate on the Y axis up and down. Uh, we're going to do float dot random from zero dot 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 360. Now this could be two radians, doesn't actually matter. Uh, I'm just making it from zero to 360. You can actually make it from zero to a million. I don't care. Uh, looks like we need in right there. 
Uh, you can make it zero to whatever you want. It's just gonna rotate at a random number. Now, obviously, if we were doing this scene, I would suggest doing instance rendering with these trees, but you know, for optimization purposes, I kind of want to add just a bunch of stuff to the scene so that we can optimize the scene. And then we can go add instance rendering, which would make this a hell of a lot faster. If I turn my back, you'll see that these trees are super dark. Uh, because the light is coming from behind me right now in the scene, and if I look this way, the, none of these trees have any ambient lighting. But we're also going to add another light in the scene that's ref opposite of the sun that kind of takes care of that um, takes care of that ambientness for us. So currently we have a sun dot set position, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right under here and I'm going to say light or let light equal, and this will be just basically the ambient light equal uh, new light object. Okay, so we're gonna have a light object here. Uh, and then I don't want a mesh, no mesh. We're just gonna call it our light. Uh, and we will say add light to the scene, our light. And we should get it. Now, as you can see, our sun dot set position at 100, negative 100. What we'll do right here is we'll do basically the same thing. So we're gonna set our light position to be uh, the opposite of this. So it's gonna be over here and over here. And actually it's gonna be at 100, negative 100. And that's basically just gonna put it all the way over there as opposed to back there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go light dot set brightness, uh, let's say 0 0.5. So it'll only be half the brightness. So it won't be the full brightness of the sun, but what we can do is as we rotate the sun, we can kind of rotate this uh, light object that we're creating. And as you can see, if we turn around and look behind us, look, they're being lit by that extra light that's up in random space up there somewhere. And right here, we have our trees. But where's our sun? I'm gonna go ahead and actually add the sun to the scene. So as opposed to just saying sun equals sun, I'm gonna go down here and uh, we're gonna make the sun a light object as well. And the sun is gonna be a light object that is of type uh, light object and it will be the sun. Mesh type will be sphere. So we're gonna be actually adding the sun to the scene and I can say sun dot set scale, so we're gonna scale it up a little bit. Let's scale it up by 10. And so now if I press play, I should be able to actually look up into the sky and see the sun. Okay, we're in our scene, and if I look behind us, <gasps> there's the sun shining down on our scene. Cool, huh? Uh, we'll say sun dot set scale, we'll say let right here. And then another thing we can do is say let sun color right here equal float three. Uh, let's go, I don't know, what do we want our sun color to be? Actually, this needs to be a float four. So the sun color is gonna be, I don't know, uh, some yellow. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, and then we need this to be 1.0. And let's do a little bit more red than uh, the green. So we'll do maybe 0 0.7. Uh, and then we need to create a new material for the sun. So let sun material. You can create this in an object, by the way. That'd be a lot more uh, easy to do, but we're not gonna do that. We're, I wanna show you that we can use our scene to create this entire thing. So the sun material is gonna be a new material right there. We will say, and this needs to be a var, because it's a struct. And we will say sun material dot set, uh, uh, you, uh, so we can just say color here, color equals sun color. And we can say all this stuff down here and we can say sun.useMaterial and we'll say the sun material. All right, so we're back in our scene. Let's look up and oh, there's a spherical sun. That looks really dumb. Uh, we need to make it so that it's not lit. The sun doesn't actually need to be lit in the scene. So we can say sun material dot is lit equals false and that's exactly why I did this uh, because that we don't need this thing to light itself and bam look at that that's our yellow sun that is a very yellow sun the next thing we want to do is we want to add flowers I have some flowers uh, so basically we'll just go down here flowers we will say let flower count int equal let's say let's do 200 flowers as well we will then say four uh, we don't need the eye in this case because we're not doing like a circle or anything. We're just doing as many flowers as we possibly can. So far, I and zero dot dot less than flower count. Let's add some flowers. Let flower equal another game object. Boom. Game object. Of course, it's going to be of type flower or name flower dot flower yellow. 
And we're also gonna randomize this, like like this, or excuse me, like 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 our trees. We're gonna randomize these. Just for now, we want to get like an idea of what it looks like. We're gonna make it look cooler in just a second. Uh, we'll have let flower, and then we'll add child flower. Okay, we're gonna add 200 flowers to our scene. Easy. Now let's set those positions. So let pause equal float three. Uh, I will go zero zero zero, boom, boom, and then after that I will say flower dot set position to our position and then another thing i want to do is also rotate the flowers in a random direction and also you can like kind of tilt them if you want at like a random you know make it look like they're poking out of different directions i'm not going to do that i'm simply just going to rotate them for now maybe i'll do it off screen or something but uh, i think this looks fine also you need to add in here of course i keep missing the in uh i don't know negative radius plus one Minus one, I guess. Yeah. So whatever radius we have right working with, we'll go radius minus one. Dot, dot, dot. Radius plus one. So it'll go like a little bit past the radius and a little bit before the radius. And then I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to put it for the Z as well. Press play and let's see what it looks like. And as you can see, we have a bunch of flowers and they're all yellow flowers. Pretty cool stuff. Let's make this a little bit more random. Uh, these are all the same tree, all the same flower. Let's create a couple functions to make us generate some random flowers. So I'm gonna create a function for the trees first. Tree pine A. It shouldn't actually hit this function, this part right here, since we're using integers. Zero, one, two, it won't actually hit anything else, but we gotta have an extra random uh, return right there. And instead of setting, so let's go back up to our trees population. Instead of setting the mesh type to just tree pine A, let's go uh, get random, all right, what is it called? Random tree mesh types. Oh, and make sure you go tree pine B, tree pine C as well, because it's just gonna, again, just do A, 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 it'll return the same thing. Let's press play and now see what it looks like. Cool, so we have all three different types of trees spawning. We have lighting, we have our cool sun. Let's also randomize the flowers. So I'm just gonna copy this function right here. Go down, select random tree flower mesh type, and we'll just do flower red, flower yellow, flower purple. Flower, we'll just do red by default. That's fine. Go back up here to our for loop for flowers. Right here, we will say uh, select random flower mesh type. Oh yeah, we've got flowers, we've got trees, super simple. We've got 500 objects in our scene, pretty awesome. So we've got flowers, we've got trees, let's add our well. And I'm actually gonna add our well back up here on the top. So I'm gonna just go like that. Let well equal game object of, of course, well. Mesh type is gonna be dot well. And we will say add child well. And also, just cause I already know this, the well needs to be scaled. So dot set scale to 0 0.5. Let's go ahead and rotate it. So I'm just gonna copy this tree dot rotate, put it here for the well dot rotate at a random. And actually let's not, ah, let's not do it random. Let's just do it. I, I know what we can do. We just do float. 45 degrees dot two radians. Cause I just want it to kind of be turned. So it's like, no, 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 check, check out my side. I kind of like looking at it like this. I want it to be more like that, you know? Now I know that the well looks a little ugly. Maybe in the next episode, I'll talk a little bit about the normal matrix. Uh, I think that's a good topic anyway. Um, but for now, look at this. We've got a cool scene. We've got tons of trees. This is our current scene. I think it looks really pretty. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hit thumbs up, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments about the scene. Yeah, I'm done. See ya.